Welcome back, statistics students, to Chapter 9, Testing a Claim. We're picking up here with 9.2, tests about a population proportion. Uh, our population proportion, our parameter is P here, so we remember that. All right. In today's lesson, we should be able to state and check the conditions for inference. Uh, remember, for random, that was our SRS. Uh, that was the S part in the second box. The 10% condition was our if check for independence. And that's again where we check uh, for uh, that 10 times our sample size is less than or equal to our population. And then the large counts condition. And that's where we check uh, for normality. And when we're checking for normality uh, and proportions, we always remember that it's the N times P has to be greater than or equal to 10. And the N times Q has to be greater than or equal to 10. We're going to learn how to perform a significance test about a population proportion. And again, remember a population proportion, that is the parameter P. We'll also look at interpreting the power of a test. That'll be something new. Uh, and describe what factors affect the power of a test. We'll also be able to describe the relationship among the probability of a type 1 error, the probability of a type 2 error, and the power of a test. So, Let's carry out a significance test. Uh, this, we call our basketball player from the previous lesson who claimed to be an 80% free throw shooter. So what we do is we ask him to, to shoot 50 free throws. Basically we're asking him to do an SRS of 50 free throws and he makes 32. So his sample proportion uh, of made shots is 0.64. That's the P hat for this situation. That's the sample proportion. Uh, and that's data that we're trying to look to see, you know, is this value, is that 0.64, is that close enough to that 80% that they're claiming to either reject or fail to reject that claim? So in other words, uh, does it provide convincing evidence? Does it provide convincing evidence against his claim? Well, to find out how... Uh, we have to perform a significance test. And remember again, our null hypothesis right here, our null hypothesis right there, always has to have the parameter equaling the value. We're thinking that uh, uh, is not as good, and that's why we chose for the alternative to have less than. All right. So in chapter eight, you may recall those three conditions uh, for inference. I reviewed those back on the first slide of what we're going to learn, the S, the I, the N, the SRS, the independence and normality, that we have to have those met before we construct a confidence interval. And those there again, the randomness, the 10% condition, and the large counts. So in carrying out the significance test, uh, the null hypothesis uh, is stated here as uh, being 80%. Uh, we're going to assume that that's true, uh, which is always a probably good uh, statement in life there, is just always assume people's statements are true uh, until you can show otherwise. <coughs> we see that the player's sample proportion of May 3,000 3, SRS of shots would vary according to approximately normal sampling distribution with mean, so again, the mean of many sample distributions should be equal to the true population proportion of 0.8 in our case. Uh, the standard deviation, uh, so the standard deviation of many sample size of the same size that we're taking would be the P times, remember now this is Q divided by N. So there's the stated uh, population proportion. That's my P. There's my Q. My sample size was 50. And again, if we uh, do the mathematics here, this is now our standard deviation of our sampling distribution. So we had a sampling mean of 0.8, sorry for the sloppy line, uh, with a, a p hat uh, of uh, uh, 0.64. That was this, uh, the shooter did shoot. That's right about right here. 
and we're looking at you know that probability of being that or lower that probability is really really small in this area and what we got to find out what that probability is and be able to carry that out uh, and and uh, compare it to our alpha so uh, again a significance test uses sample data to measure the strength of evidence against the null hypothesis so here are some principles that apply to most uh, significance tests. The test compares the statistic calculated from the sample data with the value of the parameter stated by the null hypothesis. Again, that parameter is stated in the null hypothesis. And we're uh, going to test that with sample data. Values of the statistic, so in other words, values of our sample that are far from the null in the direction specified by the alternative hypothesis give evidence against this. Against this. In other words, again, if we've got uh, values that are far from, uh, if you go back to this slide, our value right down here, uh, right down here, it looks like it's far from that proposed uh, null hypothesis. If you have that, that gives pretty good evidence against that null. So we have to actually do some calculations here in these problems and we're going to calculate what's called the test statistic. To calculate the test statistic, you're going to take that statistic, in our case uh, that was our p hat, and we'll subtract our parameter which was p, all over that standard deviation of the statistic. Uh, again, that can vary depending on we're using proportions or means, uh, but that standard deviation of our statistic, if you remember for proportions, is that square root of p times q all divided by the square root of, or divided by m, and the square root of all that. So the test statistic says how far the sample result is from the null parameter values. It'll tell us how far it is in, in a z-score. In what direction? Negative be to the left and positive be to the right. Uh, so you can use that test statistic to find the p-value of the test by using table A. And in a separate video we'll talk about how to do the calculator as well too. So uh, in our free throw shooter example the sample portion is 0.64. Right. That was our sample. That was our p-hat. Okay. It's pretty far below the hypothesis value of 0 0.80. And if you do went through the standardized, uh, standardizing that test statistic, again, you would see there is our p hat. Right here is our p hat minus our p. And that was the standard deviation that was calculated earlier. And that's how we get a z score of negative 0.283. So it's negative 2.83 standard deviations away from that hypothesis value of 0.80. <clears throat> so that's that shaded region that, that I was showing earlier. That right there, uh, that little shaded region, uh, if we look that up, if we look up that z-score, uh, that z-score of negative 2.83, what we can do, uh, if we look that up on the z-chart or the table A, Okay. We could find that that value is 0 0.0023, and that's a pretty darn small number. And the smaller that number is, uh, the more evidence we have against the null hypothesis uh, when using the p-value test. So basically what we're saying is that if that null hypothesis is true, in other words, if that player shoots 80% of his free throws in the long run, there's really only about a 2 in 1,000 or 23 in 10,000 chance that that player make as few as 32 or 50 shots. And that's a very low chance. Uh, so that's, again, going back to statistical significance and saying that the uh, to be statistically significant, it is a ch uh, so small that it doesn't occur by chance. And this does appear to be so small that this probably isn't occurring by chance, that there is probably a reason for that, and that more than likely uh, the player is lying about that number.
And he's really not an 80% free throw shooter. Well, here's a purple giraffe for you. Uh, to perform a significance test, we state hypotheses. Okay, That's what's going to go in box one of your four-step process. If you look at that four-step process here, uh, the hypotheses will go into that box one. That's where your null and alternative hypotheses go. Checking the conditions, that's the sin part that goes in the second box of the four-step process. The calculations you do to do that test statistic and the p-value, that will go into the third box. That's where we do our problem. And then our conclusion will go in that last box of our four-step process as we go through. And again, outlining that four-step process, you state in the first box, what hypothesis do you want to test? and at what significance level, and define any parameters you use. Plan, choose the appropriate inference method and check conditions. Do it if the conditions are met, perform the calculations. So in other words, compute the test statistic using that z-score, find the p-value, and then in the last box make your decision about the hypothesis and context of the problem. So when the conditions are met, uh, when these uh, three conditions are met in the in the second box for inference. Okay, um, you know the the sin part, the uh, random sample, the independence, and the normality, the large counts piece. Uh, we know that the sampling distribution of the of the p hats is approximately normal, uh, with a mean of p and a standard deviation of the square root of p times q over n. Uh, square root of the z statistic. When you calculate that z statistic of uh, that test statistic, it has approximately the standard normal distribution when the null is true, and then therefore p values come from the standard normal distribution. So, in a one sample z test for a proportion, again, uh, we'll, we'll never use a t test on a proportion. Uh, you will choose an SRS of size n from a large population that contains an unknown proportion of p of successes. And to test that hypothesis, uh, you compute the z statistic. Okay? And that's what we have right here is that z statistic right here. Okay? So again, my sample value minus my population value, all divided by the standard deviation of that sample. So find the p-value by calculating the probability of getting that z-testic this large or larger in the direction specified by the alternative hypothesis. So again, if it, uh, if you're looking at your hypothesis value, you're testing to see if it's greater than. So you're looking for uh, the probability in this area. When it's less than, you've got a left-tailed test uh, in this area here. And if it's not equal to, you've got a two-tailed test. So you'd end up finding one of these areas and really just doubling it because this area over here is the same size. All right, at this point now, uh, we should be able to uh, do these problems right here, 25 through 28, 31, 35, 39, and 41. Wish you luck and happy Purple Drafts to everybody.